today we're going to be looking at this wonderful SLR camera which first came out in 1983 and finished production in 1987. The Nikon FA was revolutionary in many ways and a lot of our digital photography today has been influenced by something that resides right at the top here. I'm going to break down all the different components of this camera and where you can go away and start shooting with it. So let's dive in. Let's start off by looking at the lens. To remove the lens itself, you just need to press this silver button here and then rotate like so, and then the lens will come off. This is a 35 millimeter lens, perfect for street photography, and it's the original one that came with the body itself. These are wonderful lenses. The brilliant thing about Nikon is that this is an F mount. So more recent digital cameras, the DSLR ranges, not the mirrorless ranges, you can use the same lenses that you can with those on this particular camera. So if you wanted to go ahead and shoot with a 50 millimeter or a 7200 that you bought through your SLR, your digital SLR, you can mount it on here and obviously use it in fully manual mode. To change the aperture, you can see the dials here, which you can just twist like so. So this particular lens goes from f2 all the way through to f22. Changing the focus is pretty simple and straightforward. You just need to rotate on this grippy like focus on the lens and then you're good to go. One of the amazing things about this camera is the closed loop exposure system. And essentially what that means is when you've gone to kind of focus your shot, take your shot, obviously the lens will be taking in the light and then the exposure will be adjusted electronically in the camera itself if you've got a battery in there for example. However this time once you've taken the shot it actually exposes one stop down to compensate for how the light is going into the diaphragm of the lens itself which is incredible because every single time you'll get that shot spot on so that was a revolution in itself which a lot of other brands were trying to figure out how Nikon managed to do that at that time there were a lot of photographers who didn't like that they were kind of averse to anything new coming out they d they wanted to stick with what they what they knew and what worked for them and so Nikon actually bought that in mind so they added this little button here at the bottom which you can see here you can press this and rotate it and it locks in and essentially what that does is it takes it back to the original exposure system that existed prior to the system that was developed in this camera so if you wanted to stick to the old school all you have to do is use that function there I know that I've mentioned the closed loop exposure system and how the Nikon lenses worked for that. I'm not so sure if it works with the new digital lenses that have been produced, which also work on the Nikon FA. That's something that will have to be tested out and seen whether there is a marked difference between a 15mm, for example, like I'm holding here, would be if I used a traditional manual 50mm lens that came out in the 80s on here. So that's something else which I'm not currently aware of. If you do know if there is a difference, then let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Now let's have a look at the dials at the top of the camera itself. On the left-hand side of the camera here, you've got your ISO settings and you can just plug in what speed ISO film you'll be using. So for example, in this case, we'll be using some Elfid HP5. You just lift this up a little bit and then rotate the red mark until you hit ISO 400, which will be there like so. Now, if you wanted to bracket your images, that's pretty simple to do. You can see this little silver button at the top here. You just need to depress that and then rotate at the same time. And then you'll see that the bracketing function comes in. So if you wanna go plus two or minus minus one, you can adjust that to your pleasure. I'm gonna put that back down to zero because I like this where exactly where I like it, like so. At the top also on the right hand side of the camera, you've got the uh, shutter speeds. And this goes from bulb mode all the way to one four thousandth of a second at the top here. And it's pretty straightforward. You can twist this and it will adjust accordingly. So obviously, Ideally, you should be using a dedicated light meter for this. However, the camera does have its own matrix metering system, which was revolutionary at the time and actually has continued to be used in digital cameras up till today. I'm not so familiar whether if that's the case with the mirrorless cameras, but certainly with DSLRs has been used across all different brands from Canon to Sony and so forth. Something to, to bear in mind that this is the camera where it first was initiated. 
the matrix system also takes into account giving you these different options so you can for the first time ever you had program mode shutter priority mode aperture mode and complete manual mode too and you can just pick that uh, and you can just twist a button at the top here you just rotate this around and then you can select which mode you'd like to be in for me i like to be in manual mode but a lot of people prefer to be in program mode as well so that's something that you have got your settings already programmed before that you know will give you the results that you want at the top here you've got the shutter release then you've also got the the shutter cock itself so there you have it that's the top it's also I shouldn't forget is the hot shoe at the top too remember always to regardless of a camera you've got look after your hot shoe don't just rip off any remote that you might have plugged in at the top gently take it out because you want to look after the metal bits and particularly with older cameras you don't know if you'll be able to source parts for it so bear that in mind now you also at the back here you can see you can flip open so you can close the viewfinder and the orange shade comes up and you can release it like so to open the camera all you have to do is pull this open and then pull this little tab across once you've loaded up your film you're gonna have to turn to the face first frame and all you have to do is Pull on the chassis cock, release the first frame, and keep going until you get to the numerical one at the top, like so. If you're careful, and for example, if you load your film in a dark bag, you could actually start firing and get probably one or two extra frames on your roll of film. There's a nice little top tip for you. And once you've got that all loaded up, you can be ready to shoot at your heart's content. My advice would be to pull off the side of the box, the, the cover, and then slide it into this bit here so that you know which film is in, in case you don't use all 36 frames when you go out to shoot on a particular day. Now that you've finished your 36 frames, or maybe 37 or 38, once that's been depressed inside, so you can't feel it on the outside, you can go ahead and roll your film. And so just rotate it and then keep going until you hear a little click at the end. Once you've done that, all you have to do is open up and then pull like so. And then you've got your canister that you can pull out. Done. Close it back and then send off for development. There are some wonderful other little functions which I haven't talked about yet. There's a self timer if you want to use that. All you have to do is pull this down and then once you depress the shutter, once you've got your film loaded, it will release. And then at 10 seconds, it will let it go. That's something for you to use if you want to do selfie. You've also got a cable release option at the top on the left hand side here. There's two different versions, one which goes directly in, into here and also a cable release at the top here which you can screw in at, at the top. So those are your two different options that you can use as well. At the bottom of the camera you may have noticed that there are some different things going on here. So this is here is for changing the battery obviously if you're going to be using the, the light meter at the top then you're going to need to have a functioning battery. So for that you'll need a 20 pence coin or even a 2p coin. I don't know if are there any 1p coins anymore? I don't even know. A 1 cent coin if there's such a thing can be used as well and all you have to do is twist this like so several times. Just be mindful that wherever you are you won't just drop it on the floor so that will come out like so and then you've got a a76 battery that goes in here so there's the port and that's the battery itself so these are two little batteries that go in that's it you can find these again uh, they're available online at a modest cost and I, I would recommend having it in there because when you're using the light meter it actually gives you a traffic light system so if it's red it obviously means you you're not advised to shoot it amber is it's exposed okay and green obviously is good to go so yeah you go 20p coin that's what you'll need or a one cent coin or 10 cent coin whichever ones they have you've got your tripod mount as well which is screwed in over there you have then got the release button for the film once your roll is shot now you'll notice on the far left hand side of this camera there are these golden bits and that is for a wonderful thing that i'm going to introduce you to now and you've got different things that you can control from here continual focus 
focus or tenuous shooting or single reflex shooting. What I really love about this though is the grip itself. So you can see how it's so easy to hold now. It gives you that sense of control over your, your shooting particularly if you're doing a fashion shoot or you're doing some portraits, perhaps in the studio, then I think this would be a really handy thing to have on top of your camera, just to give you that additional kind of control. Even if you don't use the actual functions of this, it does add a little bit of weight. It just gives you that, that feel, which is great. Highly recommended. Also, it looks super cool. I mean, look at this. It's all in flush black. This one, this particular one I found had been well kept over a long period of time. It's hardly ever used. I think it was 20 years since it had been used. It was fired off straight away the first time. So these things are solidly built by Nikon. So if you can get one for it, I strongly recommend it. Just a word on what time of the day to shoot with this. Of course, you can shoot at any time of the day, even if you're doing long exposure photography late at night, and that would be perfectly fine to do with this wonderful camera. My suggestion for daytime shooting would be to obviously use the appropriate lens for the conditions that you're working in. If you're working street, then I recommend 35 millimeter. If you're working with a singular person or a couple of people, then I would go for the 85 millimeter. And 50 millimeter is a good, good one to kind of chuck in the bag just in case you're not sure about whether you're gonna be shooting some landscapes or portraits. A 70 to 200, especially if you're going to be shooting from some distance, would become highly recommended. You can use the new 70 200 Obviously, the autofocus is not going to work on this, but the manual will, and you'll get some beautiful images for sure, especially with that new glass that you might have. What I really love about this is the fact that you've got the old camera system, which can be used with a new camera system. So I've got a Nikon D800, which is one of my favorite cameras, my first major DSLR purchase and I still use it today. It's such a wonderful camera. But the great thing about it is that with all my lenses that I have for this, I can just take them off and put them on here. So if I'm out on a shoot with my Nikon D800, but I fancy having that additional option of having my trusted film camera with me, I will always take my Nikon FA. That's the great thing about the F mount lenses. You can just pick them up, shoot, particularly if you've got the old D ranges from, from Nikon. The other thing to add really here would be the Nikon F8 is hardly ever talked about. You're gonna find this camera online at a very modest price compared to say the Nikon FM2, which is a very, very popular Nikon camera. You're gonna get some wonderful features on here, particularly if you like the automatic features or you like the program or shutter mode features, which were first created on this camera, then you're gonna love this. You'll save a lot of money too. Generally, these are really super well kept. A little bit trickier to find the black bodied ones. The silver bodied ones are a lot easier to find, but I was a little bit finicky and I really wanted a black one. I really like the look of it. It matches, of course, with my, my D800 as well. Finally, this is a super light camera to carry once you've taken the, the handle grip off. Easy to use. If you've used a Nikon before, you'll know exactly how to use it straight away. It will just be seamless. It's lightweight, easy to carry, perfect. I would strongly recommend it if you're looking to do street photography. Very easy to throw into your bag and take with you anywhere that you go. I hope you found this video helpful. Do let me know in the comments below if I've left anything out that will help you to make a decision on whether to shoot with this camera or if you've got this camera already, if there's anything that I've left out, please let me know in the comments below so that somebody else can benefit from it too. In the meantime, check out the next video, which is right here. See you on there.